morning. Today is one of my most favorite times of the year. Any guesses? Seed planning. I love ordering seeds. But I have a mess of them because I see them online. I'm like, oh, that's a pretty flower. It says easy to grow. And then I buy it. And then I have a whole bunch of easy to grow flowers that don't go with anything else. <laughs> so I decided to take a step-by-step -step, um, process today and organize my seeds. So first I separated each group of seeds, say um, my sunflowers. I've collected these different ones, okay? Put them in a pile, right? Then I do my yarrow. We actually collected a whole bunch of yarrow um, this spring and fall. And so I have that. And once I get them kind of categorized, then I'm gonna put them into groups of early, well, spring, early summer, mid summer, late summer, and um, fall. So the tricky part to this is you get this beautiful seed package, right? And you're like, oh, that's what I ordered. And then you go to start your seeds and you're like trying to figure out the details of like, how do I plant it and when? And where, how does it grow? So I decided to look up each flower because I don't know them very well yet and write um, late L spring and early summer. So that helps me organize all my different flowers now into groups. And this is what I've started. So I wrote early summer and I wrote the poppies and I tried to write a brief coloration of what I have. So when I start my flower garden, I can put whatever I'm gonna be putting in bouquets together. So I only have a little bit of a dark palette, just scarlet. I'm gonna get one purple and white dianthus. And I marked the ones that I plan on buying. And then once I look at my, my um, once I match up the color palette, I say, okay, look, I do have, these probably would be pretty together in a bouquet with some pink or white yarrow. So I know that I have, um, different types of flowers that would look good in bouquets and in landscaping arrangements. So sometimes it gets a little tricky in the summer because you have like, say, these are all my zinnias. Huh, I'm a zinnia lover. Anyways, and they are blooming for months. They're blooming like an annual or like your tomatoes would. They're blooming all summer. Um, but we're gonna plan on these blooming until frost and I'm gonna be pairing, for me in zone 6B, I'm gonna be um, you know, matching up color palettes with amaranth, and I have some celosia here. These are really cool um, flowers. And then we also have, I've collected random flowers and herbs. Uh, that's a whole nother, that's the other piece to this is like basil, I you know, can flower really well. And even just regular basil, the little flowers, are good for filling flowers. So we have Cosmos calendula is another herb that we um, made a salve with last year. These gumfrina are really good fillers. They're really pretty dense little touches of color. Um, I haven't grown that one yet, but hyssop, straw flower, a toothache plant, and horse heel. So these will all be complementary flowers to the zinnias, the sunflowers, and the uh, celosia coxcomb flowers. We're gonna take these three amaranth, for example, and make color palettes, color palettes that we can um, pick for the summer, for summer bouquets. So this is like an orange amaranth, and I actually think this coral, I think this coral zinnia will be really pretty next to that in a bouquet. Um, some of these might not pit, fit perfectly, but like white and green or red would go together. Um, I might need more of those polar bears. And then you could also do like a daisy with one of those. I think the blue daisy and that green would be really cool. And you can start building out bouquets and how you're going to plant them in the garden. Now, celosia might be its own group, if we can make another spot, so to speak, that we would pair some zinnias with. 
So actually, as I'm doing this, it's getting harder to make like color combinations when you have so like mixed packages, rainbow things. Um, even something like this is trickier. It's tricky having those packages because I can't say I know that a purple or pink seed will be the one that I plant. Um, I don't know what color of these flowers will come up when I'm planting. So it does make it a little trickier if, um, unless you're just planting the whole package, but it's kind of harder to organize your garden according to color if you have these multi-packs. So I'm debating about whether I'll plant <clears throat> just my zinnias in some sort of color order, and then maybe the amaranths behind them in that similar color pattern. Um, and maybe what I know is purples in one area and have all the multicolors in the middle. So I can pull from the, like the whites and the pinks or the purples and the yellows, and then all the multicolors that can fill in real fun can be in between those and I can see what's in the garden and, and how to make the best bouquets. So I've noticed that um, it's very easy to get overwhelmed with different things. It might be best just to pick a couple main focal flowers and a few like natural filler flowers like yarrow or butterfly bush or basil. Um, very simple things to grow for just a certain color palette if you're trying to um, get into bouquets or certain color arrangements. As much as I want to um, carry these combinations into fall, I am not going to try to buy extra flowers just for that. I'm gonna stick and see how long these last. And certain ones like Celosia and Stroll Flower will dry really well. And we can put those in like little ornaments or make you know, experiment with dried flowers in the winter when there's not as much to do. But the fall ends up, usually if you're doing a vegetable garden, late summer, fall is really hard to take care of flowers and put up all your food that you've been growing all summer. So you'll have to decide, you know, what priority you need to do. Um, yeah, so just to recap, um, I separated the flowers first into season and I wrote, I'm going to write on all the rest of my packages um, or just assume all the other packages are summer and the ones I wrote for early summer and spring are the ones that I need to keep separate for a different growing season. So I'm probably going to take notes on my particular property or pictures of bouquets that I'm making that summer for our family or for friends just to like look back. I was able to do that a little bit this year and see like, oh yeah, I remember the yarrow was there when this was growing in and you can kind of build upon that knowledge for the next year. Um, so after you've secondly labeled your packages for what growing season, then you can categorize them into the bouquet colors that you would use. Um, and then you can also plan your garden according, plant your garden according to that color palette uh, as best as you can. Some people might want to do it per flower like zinnias in a row or amaranth. Uh, I've heard that planting in color palettes is easier for picking if you do decide to pick to sell or on any sort of scale. So as I'm packing these up, I forgot to tell you one thing. When you're looking at the color palettes, you wanna make sure you have a couple big focal flowers that complement each other. So in this white color palette, I have zinnias. Um, daisies aren't big, but they could be a focal flower if you had enough of them. And this particular one has this, this bluish color. Um, and since the rest of these would be more like fillers with that bouquet, I'm trying to think of what flower I could match and kind of uh, accent with that, that bluish purple in the middle. So I'm gonna plant this white color palette by my purpley color palette because there is this flower in here. I think some of these purple um, periwinkle colors would be really pretty in that bouquet and really make it pop. Um, so that's another thing to note if you don't have like a complete set like this isn't your whole bouquet what are you gonna plant what group of colors are you gonna plant it next to so it's easier for you to visualize okay that is a flower it's just a few rows over and I can add it to this white bouquet 
So this is what I end up with. I have my flower box organized. These are my spring flowers. These are my summer. And all of these post-it notes are like the colors, bold colors. And then that one is whites and greens and pinkish orange and so on. So now when I go to plant my seeds, I am ready to go. So thanks for joining me today. I hope you got some inspiration for wonderful flowers. And always remember, you're the best and you're beautiful.